This is the third video of the abdomen series. In this video, I will be talking about the blood supply of gastrointestinal tract. I will demonstrate the celiac trunk, superior mesenteric artery, and inferior mesenteric artery and their branches. Lastly, I will demonstrate the retroperitoneal structures, kidneys and ureter, inferior vena cava and aorta. The arterial supply to the gastrointestinal system comes from the three unpaired arteries coming from the abdominal aorta. They supply the three sections of the gut, the foregut, midgut and hindgut. Let me demonstrate all these major arteries, their branches and the structure supplied by them. In this procession, the surrounding fat and the peritoneum has been removed. Here is the root of celiac trunk arising from the abdominal aorta. The celiac trunk supplies the structure that are derived from the foregut. This short artery gives off three branches, the left gastric artery, the splenic artery and the common hepatic artery. Let's look at the first branch. Here is the left gastric artery. This supplies the left side of the lesser curvature of the stomach and the abdominal esophagus. It anastomoses with the right gastric artery. The second branch is the splenic artery. It is large and tortuous and gives off branches to the pancreas along its course. It then travels through the spleno-renal ligament to the spleen. The splenic artery also gives rise to short gastric arteries which supply the fundus of the stomach. The left gastroepiploic is a branch of the splenic artery. It supplies the greater curvature of the stomach and the greater omentum. This is the common hepatic artery, the third branch of the celiac trunk. It runs to the right side giving its first branch the right gastric artery which supplies the right side of the lesser curvature of the stomach and anastomoses with the left gastric artery. The common hepatic then divides into two terminal branches the proper hepatic artery and the gastroduodenal artery. The gastroduodenal artery turns downwards towards the duodenum and supplies the upper part of the duodenum and the head of the pancreas. This artery gives rise to the right gastroepiploic artery. This supplies the greater omentum and the greater curvature of the stomach and anastomoses with the left gastroepiploic artery. The gastroduodenal artery also gives rise to superior pancreaticoduodenal artery. The superior pancreaticoduodenal artery then bifurcates into an anterior and posterior branches that are not visible here. The proper hepatic artery continues along here through the porta hepatis to supply liver and the gallbladder. At this point it divides to form a right and left hepatic artery. The cystic artery which supplies the gallbladder is usually a branch of the right hepatic artery. In this procession, the superior mesenteric artery and its branching will be demonstrated. Here is the superior mesenteric artery arising from the abdominal aorta just one centimeter below the celiac trunk. It lies posterior to the body of the pancreas but is anterior to the horizontal part of the duodenum. It supplies the part of the pancreas and the structure that are derived from the midgut, the last part of duodenum, geogenum, ileum, cecum, appendix, ascending colon, and the right two-third of the transverse colon. Here at the junction of the right two-third and the left one-third of the transverse colon, this artery anastomoses with the inferior mesenteric artery. The first branch of this artery supplies the head of the pancreas and part of the duodenum. This forms the anterior and the posterior inferior pancreaticoduodenal arteries. 
which anastomose with the superior pancreatic duodenal arteries mentioned earlier the superior mesenteric artery travels through the mesentery here and gives following branches to the duodenum and the ileum these form the arterial arcades and vasa recta the iliocolic artery which passes to the right supplies the cecum and appendix the appendicular artery arises from the iliocolic artery the right colic artery it supplies the ascending colon the middle colic artery it supplies the right to third of the transverse colon all of the above arteries anastomose with each other the anastomosis of the arteries along the colon forms the marginal artery from which branches go to the colon This is the inferior mesenteric artery. It arises about 3 cm superior to the bifurcation of the abdominal aorta. It runs downwards towards the superior pelvic aperture. This branch of the inferior mesenteric artery running towards the splenic flexure is the left colic artery and supplies the left third of the transverse colon and the entire descending colon. It anastomoses with the middle colic artery via the marginal artery. The sigmoid branches of the inferior mesenteric artery supply the sigmoid colon. The superior rectal artery supplies the superior part of the rectum. The middle and inferior rectal arteries supply the rest of the rectum. These are branches of the internal iliac artery, which will be seen in the pelvis and perineum video. Here are right and left. paragolic gutters on the lateral sides of ascending and descending colon these are a potential site for fluid collection that has been mentioned earlier since the blood vessels enter the gi tract from its medial side the bowel can be accessed surgically with minimal blood loss from the lateral approach for example here is the descending colon we can see the blood supply is coming on the medial side so to avoid the blood loss it is better to approach from its lateral aspect at this point i will describe the portal venous circulation the portal system starts at the gi tract and ends at the liver unlike the systemic veins which drain from the cell level to the heart The benefit of having a portal system is that nutrient can be absorbed from the GI tract and passed to the liver for processing. The portal vein provides the venous drainage for the lower esophagus, stomach, small and large intestines and rectum. It also drains the pancreas and spleen. Blood from the portal vein after passing through the hepatic sinusoids travels to the hepatic veins. which ultimately drain the deoxygenated blood into the inferior vena cava here is the superior mesenteric vein it joins the splenic vein to form the portal vein the portal vein lies posterior to the neck of the pancreas the inferior mesenteric vein drains into the splenic vein this large portal vein ascends up towards the liver It passes through a fold of peritoneum at the free border of the lesser omentum with the bile duct and the hepatic artery proper. These three structures form the porta hepatis lying anterior to the foramen of Winslow. There are sites at which the portal circulation and anastomosis with the systemic venous system. In the event of the portal venous hypertension as in hepatic cirrhosis or portal vein obstruction blood is diverted from the high pressure portal system to the lower pressure systemic system at these sites this can cause the anastomotic vein to dilate leading to varicose veins clinically the sites of anastomosis are important and there are three areas the first area is the gastroesophageal junction This is the site for the esophageal varices. 
Second area is the anorectal junction where the dilated veins are called hemorrhoids. Lastly, in severe portal hypertension, the embryonic umbilical veins connecting the liver to the umbilicus may become dilated. These produce snake-like varicosities in the periumbilical region. The condition is called the caput medici. The gastrointestinal system is drained by lymph nodes that are lying anterior to the aorta. These are called pre-aortic lymph nodes. There are three groups of pre-aortic lymph nodes. These groups are clustered around the three major arteries that supply the gut. The celiac, superior mesenteric and the inferior mesenteric groups of lymph nodes. The structure drained by each group have a similar blood supply. Foregut derived structures are drained by the celiac lymph nodes. Midgut derived structures are drained by the superior mesenteric lymph nodes and the hindgut derived structures are drained by the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes. Lymph travels in a superior direction. Lymph from the inferior mesenteric lymph nodes drains into the superior mesenteric lymph nodes. Lymph from the superior mesenteric lymph nodes drains into celiac lymph nodes via the connecting lymphatic channels. The celiac lymph nodes then drain into the cisterna chile. The thoracic duct starts at the cisterna chile and carries the lymph to the venous system. It drains at the junction of the left subclavian vein and the left internal jugular vein. Since the abdominal nodes are so deep, any pathological change in them cannot be detected by physical examination alone. However, a palpable, hard and enlarged left supraclavicular node may indicate lymphatic metastasis spread from any region drained by the thoracic duct, including the abdomen. In this prosection, the fat and fascia around the kidneys and ureters have been removed. This is the right kidney and this is the left kidney. Their blood supply comes from the right and left renal arteries. These are the branches of the abdominal aorta. These are the left and the right renal veins that drain the blood from both kidneys. These are the adrenal glands at the superior pole of the kidneys. They have an extensive arterial supply but only a single vein for the venous drainage. This is the right and this is the left ureter. This is the hilum of the kidney. The dilated segment of the ureter close to kidney is called the renal pelvis. The pelvis branches further into major calluses and then minor calluses. This area is an important landmark where the ureter can be palpated during surgery. At this point the ureter crossing the bifurcation of the common iliac artery into external and internal iliac arteries. This is where the ureter leaves the abdominal cavity and enters the pelvic cavity. These vessels running on both sides on left and right are gonadal arteries and veins. In male it will be testicular arteries and in female it will be replaced by the ovarian artery. These are the branches of the abdominal aorta. In this male cadaver note that the right testicular vein drains into the inferior vena cava while the left testicular vein drains into the left renal vein. I would like to mention one more recess where fluid can collect in the supine patient, the hepatorenal recess. The fluid can also pass into the pelvic cavity and accumulate in the peritoneal pouches and these pouches will be covered in the pelvis and perineum video. 
This is the inferior vena cava running on the right side of vertebral bodies. Notice that it is closely adhered to the liver here. This is the abdominal aorta. These are renal arteries. At this point, at the level of the fourth vertebral body, the abdominal aorta bifurcates into left and right common iliac arteries.